If you are wrong on Israel, I guarantee you, you will be wrong on your end time theology. Or worse, you could become an enemy of God. Next. Hey, you are one of the best studio audiences I've had in a long time. I, I was just telling everyone here before we went on the air, the Holy Spirit is awesome in this place. I will never find that old. I will ne- it is so wonderful to know I'm not alone. I'm not doing it by myself. It's not solo. Holy Spirit, take over. Amen. A leading world evangelist read my booklet, The Mystery Law of Evangelism. He saw the value of humanitarian aid, but he missed the big picture. You see, it had never dawned on him to evangelize the Jew. This great evangelist, this renowned Gentile Christian evangelist was spiritually blind to the salvation of Israel. It's all about to change. Why? History is about to repeat, but it's going to repeat exponentially. It has to do with the booklet that this evangelist read that changed his whole paradigm. He said, I know so many Jewish people, and I've just never... I mean, isn't it amazing? An evangelist, a world-renowned evangelist, I never thought that I should share Jesus with my Jewish friends. There is the mystery law of evangelism that so few people understand. Let's look at Pentecost, for example. 120 Jews get hit with the Holy Spirit, run out in the streets because they are so fanatic for God. That's the way I was when I got saved. I mean, I didn't know anything, but I knew Jesus was real. That's the way these Jews were, these 120. They ran in the streets. 3,000 Jewish people then come to the Lord. Then the Gentiles' job, according to the New Testament, is to reach the Jew. You'll see the Scripture in a moment. The Jewish believer's job is to reach the Gentile. And my people did a good job. All of you that are not from non-Jewish background would say, yes, they did, because when the Jew gets saved, they are radical for Jesus. Now, this leads to the biblical law of evangelism that few Christians know, but it's about to change. When God the Father wanted to reach the world, he started with what people group? The Jews, Abram, who became Abraham. He wanted to reach everyone, but he started with the Jew. But it wasn't just him. When Jesus wanted to reach the whole world, he started this, in fact, he said a pretty strong statement. He said, I only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He knew there was, some, there was a principle involved. God the Father illustrated the principle. God the Son illustrated the same principle. How about the great apostle to the Gentiles? Paul, what did he say in Romans 1.16? I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, but then he had the law of evangelism, to the Jew first. Not just the historical order, but it is a seed principle, as you'll learn, that when you plant the seed with the Jew, it multiplies to everyone, to Gentiles. In fact, more Gentiles will come to know the Messiah by going to the Jew first than if you went to the Gentile first. Doesn't make sense. But a lot in the invisible world that's only revealed through the Scriptures 
doesn't make sense to the natural mind. The greatest, greater glory revival the world's ever seen in history is about ready to happen. I believe it's described at the wedding feast at Cana. Do you remember where Jesus turned water into wine supernaturally? John 2.10 says, you have saved the best wine till now. This greater glory revival is more than we have any, any generation has ever seen. You can't even fathom how great it's going to be. Haggai 2.9 talks about it. The glory of this latter house. Well, what was the first house? The Jewish temple. What is the latter house? Our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. You see, you would have to go to the physical temple to see the glory, feel the glory. But wherever we go with this greater glory, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. God's eyes and all of heaven on the greatest and last move of God's Spirit. The greater glory move will culminate in all Israel being saved. In fact, Jesus said, I'll not, not even return until the Jewish people say, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. One of the many distinct callings, see a lot of people confuse physical and spiritual. There are physical callings for the Jew that aren't on the rest of the world. And there are physical callings for the Gentile that aren't on the rest of the world. But in the spirit, we are all physical or spiritual seed of Abraham. Every promise in the spirit is for all believers. However, there are certain distinct promises for the physical Jew. And I, I think it's important for you to understand them. Um, but it does beg a question before I get to that. And the question is, what happens to your Jewish friend who dies without knowing Jesus? Well, God makes it clear. Rabbinic Judaism says if you're a good Jew, you go to heaven. But that's not what God says. God says that in Leviticus 17.11, the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you on the altar to make atonement for your lives. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. And Leviticus says an animal must be sacrificed in the temple. 70 AD, the temple disappeared. It was destroyed. So we could, we Jews or Gentiles, cannot have atonement from an animal sacrifice in the temple, no matter what anyone says. Acts 4.12, Peter settles it. He says, there's no other name by which we must be saved. Paul and God's heart was broken over the salvation of Israel. We have seen the devil's best move. Now it's God's turn. Suddenly, the glory that was on Moses and Paul, the greater glory will appear on thousands of young Israelis that will evangelize the Gentile world one more time. Now, you have to understand, after the charismatic movement ended, Jewish openness, I might even add almost Gentile openness began to dry up. And because the biblical and best way to reach Jews in particular and all people is with the gospel by demonstrating the kingdom in the supernatural, I've given believers a heart for the supernatural and a heart for general evangelism. But now God's heart is turning towards Israel. It's time for the new season. It's time for something more. It's time for the greater glory. It's time for the greater works. Be right back. We will be 
right back to It's Supernatural. What if you only had 15 seconds to find a safe place to hide? The greatest challenge that Israel has right now is that radical Islam, influenced and funded by Iran, have stored up thousands of bombs and missiles ready to launch against Israel from the north and the south. Over 4,000 rockets and missiles have been launched against Israel so far this year. What if a loud siren rang out in your neighborhood warning you that thousands of missiles had been launched? This threat is one that innocent Israeli citizens have to face every day. Imagine you or your children being alone near a school, park, playground, a shopping center, or by older buildings that do not have a bomb shelter. Israeli citizens only have 15 seconds to find a safe place to hide with ministry partners like you. We have already started funding the building of these mobile bomb shelters. Each shelter can hold up to 15 people. These special design cement units are approved by the Israeli Homeland Security and the Israeli Defense Ministry. On the outside of every bomb shelter is a sign reading donated with love for the safety of the people of Israel by METV. Everyone who enters these shelters will know that it is Jewish and Gentile believers in the Messiah who have helped build the very shelter that is saving their lives. And many will watch the brand new TV programs we're producing for METV, pointing the Jewish people to the one who saves lives for all of eternity. God asks us not only to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but God also promised that those who bless Israel shall be blessed. What have you been praying for God to do in your life? Whatever it is, get ready to receive the promise that comes from being a blessing to Israel. Your double high gift of 18 or 180 or $1,800 will go towards the bomb shelters in Israel and Jewish evangelism. You can make a difference. How? By helping Sid Roth build and install these heavy-duty mobile bomb shelters. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. We now return to It's Supernatural. Now, these are not my words. They are God's words. I'm going to read from the complete Jewish Bible, Isaiah chapter 49, verse 14 to 16. But Zion says, Adonai, that's God, has abandoned me. Adonai has forgotten me. And God says, can a woman forget her child at the breast, not show pity on the child from her womb? Even if these were to forget, I would not forget you. That's the Jewish people. God's saying, I will not forget you. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. Notice the word engraved, not tattoo. Engraved means an incision, an incision. I have engraved, God himself says, this is how special you are to me. I have engraved you in the palms of my hands. You are always before me. Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, stated the call of the Gentiles that few Gentile believers know. Romans 11, 11. I say then, have they, that's the Jewish people, stumbled that they should fall? God forbid but rather through their fall, salvation has come on to the Gentiles. Now you're called, Gentile church, to, pro what's the call to the Gentile? To provoke or energize or evangelize the Jewish people to jealousy. The call of the Gentile is to provoke the Jew to jealousy, to want what the Gentile church has, and this is God's perfect tapestry he's put together. He loves the world. That's why he sent his son. What are the irrevocable different callings on the 
physical Jew. One, blessings and cursings. You look out throughout history, what I'm about to read to you is history. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless them who bless you, that's the Jewish people, who's I, God. God will bless those that bless the Jewish people and curse those that curse them. He uses the Jewish people to judge the world, if you will. Zechariah 2.8 makes it even stronger in uh, the Living Bible. I remember reading this many years ago. For he who harms you, that's Israel, sticks their finger in God's eye. That is serious, serious business. As you may know, anti-Semitism is at a world high right now. As you probably know, uh, members of the United States Co Congress are blatant anti-Semites, anti-Jewish. It's hard to believe, but we've seen things change so quickly before our eyes. Second, Jews, it says in the Word of God, can never be destroyed. Do you realize if every Jew had died in the Holocaust, God's word would have been phony? But against impossible God, odds, against all odds, not just the Holocaust, you go throughout all of history, the physical Jew still exists today. Jeremiah 31, verse 35 to 36 says, as long as there's a sun and moon and stars, last time I checked, there's sun, moon, and stars. There will be a physical Jew on the face of this earth. You see, God's word is at stake on the survival of the physical Jew. Three, the Jewish people are called by God to be a nation of evangelists. Did you know, even in unbelief in the Messiah, we are a nation of evangelists by our very existence the greatest proof the Bible is from God is our very existence. Isaiah 43, 10, talking to the Jewish people, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. For the physical Jewish people, and I might add, there's some people involved in a false understanding of religion, and they think just because a Gentile is a spiritual seed of Abraham, they are a physical seed of Abraham. That's called replacement theology. And some say it's not replacement theology. Um, we, we believe the Jew is always the Jew, uh, but, but we believe we have all the physical promises to the physical Jew. You'll see in a moment why that's unbiblical. So the physical Jewish people are given the physical land of Israel according to covenant in Psalm 105, 8 to 11, in many places, but this summarizes it. God says, I give to the physical seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob the land of Israel for a thousand generations forever and for everlasting. Uh, that, that, if I was an attorney, I'd take that case. <laughs> now, this is the set time to favor Zion. We are at the fullness of the Gentile age. Luke 21, 24 says, when the Jewish people have possession of the land of Israel, we're coming into that fullness of the Gentile age. It's a signpost how soon the Messiah is going to be returning. Luke 21, 24, they, the Jewish people, will fall by the edge of the sword, be led away captive to all nations. We saw that. And Jerusalem will be trampled on by the Gentiles. We saw that until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. 1967, Jerusalem was in Jewish possession. We are coming into the time clock for the fullness of the Gentile age, for the fullness of the age, for the return of Messiah. The fullness of the Gentiles triggers 
the greater glory revival in Israel and the world. Romans 11, 25 and 26. For I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, lest you be wise in your own estimation. For partial hardening has happened upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. Both the fullness of the Gentiles, the hardness coming off of the eyes of Jewish people to the gospel is going to be removed with this greater glory that is hitting planet Earth right now. What does this mean to the world? Jewish people coming to the Messiah. Here's what it means. Romans 11, verse 12 and 15. Now, if there, the Jewish people's transgression means riches for the Gentiles, it did, how much more will their fullness mean? For if the rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what would their acceptance mean but life from the dead? You know what it takes for life from the dead? For a dead person to come back to life? Resurrection power, the glory. That's what it means when you see Jewish people come to the Lord. It means the glory has come. One more time, Zechariah 8.23, the rise of Jewish evangelists to, to reach the world. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 10 men from every language of the nations, that's the Gentiles, will take hold of the garment, that's the prayer shawl, the garment of a Jew saying, let us go with you, for we've heard that God is with you. Can you imagine 10,000 young Israeli evangelists like Paul the Apostle suddenly being raised up and going to the nations of the world? That is what is before us. But I have to ask you this question. Do you know, have you had experiential knowledge with Jesus, or have you had religion that has taught you the principles, and you're dealing with head knowledge and not experiential knowledge? World of difference between religion and relationship. Say this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability, out loud. Dear God, Dear God I've made many mistakes in my life. And I'm, so sorry. and I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. washes away every mistake I've ever made. And I am clean. And, clean. and now that I'm clean, and now that I'm clean. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, inside of me. Thank you for saving me from my sins. Thank you I make you my Lord. I want to experience you. I want to know you. Amen. I pray in Yeshua's name that you have the heart of Ruth, that you have the heart of Esther, that you have God's heart for the Jewish people and Israel and that you would know that you know that you know that Messiah Jesus is Lord over every area of your life. Amen.